Miss McKinnon then, and he's 20, and at that time, wrong feeding and the carelessness of parents caused the death of many young babies, and Dr. King asked me to nurse three neglected little ones he brought from foster homes in Dunedin. Mrs. King kept a record of the doctor's instructions about their feeding and general care, and great was our joy to see this wee mites grow and prosper as we nursed them in the open air. Dear Joanna, it only seems fitting that I write this letter to you in the fresh spring air, wondering how I begin to tell your story. How do I begin to express how proud of you I am, even though I've never met you and never will? This year I visited Plunkett's birthplaces in Dunedin, Seacliff and Caratane to find out more about you. In your prime, you were first described as merely an asylum attendant, but a matron soon changed that by recommending you to the medical superintendent at Seacliff Asylum. At the time, he was known as Dr. Truby King, the man who would go on to found Plunkett in 1907. You had exceptional advantages that no other Plunkett nurse would ever have because you were the only one to be trained directly by him. Even after a year's training at Caratane, nurses would never be as fortunate as you. Truby King thought you were a winsome and bonny little Highlander. You came to New Zealand from Skye in Scotland, and little did you know at the time that you would become a pioneering woman ahead of your time, and help to revolutionise the care of mothers and infants in New Zealand. First of all, Truby King arranged for you to board in the Murray family home in Dunedin and asked you to circulate his methods, which would lower the infant death rate and produce healthier children. Your personality and enthusiasm would win over sceptical doctor's wives and middle class women. And within three months of working as a Plunkett nurse, you had 50 babies in your care. In 1908, you married the son of the family you boarded with, my great-great-grandfather, James Murray. You would have two sons together, but ironically and sadly would survive both of them. In my heart, I know that your babies would have been your greatest achievement, but what I'm most proud of you for is how you devoted your lifetime to the cause of Plunkett and its achievements. Our family is fortunate to still have your engraved medal which you received just before your marriage. You retained the medal because of your pioneering contribution to Plunkett, whereas other nurses had to relinquish theirs when they got married. After your local success, it is documented that the Kindred Society were eager to secure your services. You would tour the country teaching the modification of cow's milk, visit babies and establish Plunkett branches nationwide. You were also entrusted by Truby King to organise the wholesale of humanised cow's milk. And as his workload increased, he relied on you to answer correspondence, write his newspaper column and pass on his teachings. You would draw Truby King's attention to a number of malnourished and neglected babies. Truby King told how you found three babies in a stable and filthy conditions. You would care for these babies and nurse them back to health at Truby King's seaside Caratane home. Your efforts would aid in the establishment of a hospital system for babies and a training school for Plunkett nurses. The letter which was sent from Plunkett on news of your death said it was your tact, zeal and devotion which laid the foundations for the Plunkett nurses of the future. The letter quoted your words from Plunkett Founders Day in 1966, where you spoke with a Scottish lilt in your voice. The doctor always said, it's the woman who will make it work, and looking round, I see you have all kept faith. The letter concluded with words which still ring true 50 years on. The finest tribute we can make is to remember your words and keep faith, so that the inheritance that you and Truby King have left us is nurtured to promote an even greater future for the Plunkett Society. We've not yet said our hellos, dear Joanna, so I won't end this letter with goodbyes. On behalf of the thousands of Plunkett babies whose lives you have improved for the better, there's only thank yous. I can only hope that your legacy lives on, as a society, we need to continue to protect the vital service which Plunkett provides, just as you protected babies over 100 years ago. With all my love, your great-great-granddaughter, Elise Joanna Childs. <laughs>